Now, my friends, there is something that is really confuses a lot of developers or anyone that is working with data in databases and SQL, and that is the differences between nulls, empty string, and blank spaces. So the nulls, as we learned, we are saying, I don't know what the value is. It is unknown. But now, on the other hand, the empty string, you are saying, I know the value, it is nothing. So the empty string is a string value which has a zero characters. This is totally different than the nulls. The nulls, we don't know anything about it. So now sometimes maybe happens to you as you are filling a forum and you come to one field, you go and by mistake hit a space bar and with that you are entering space into the field. And you just jump to the next field without entering any other values. So we have now like a space character inside the field. This is really evil in databases because once the user enter a blank space it's gonna go and store it as a value inside the database and it's gonna take storage so it could be one space or many spaces depends on how long you press the space bar so the blank space is a string but the size is not zero like the empty string we're gonna have a size of how many spaces you have entered so here it's not like the null we know the value it is string and the character of that gonna be space okay so let's see those three scenarios inside the scale now i have like a dummy data using the city statements don't worry about it i'm gonna teach all those stuff in the next tutorials so now we have here like four rows the first one with a value a the next one with null the third one with empty string so as you can see there is nothing between those two quotes and the last one we have a space between those two quotes now let's go and query this temporal table so select star from orders and execute so now by looking to the values of the categories you can find all the scenarios now so now the first scenario is the easiest one where we have a normal value we have here an a but the other three rows we don't have normal values we have like empty stuff so the first one gonna be the null so we don't have a value this is the special marker from sql it says null so there is no value and the other two they are really confusing as you can see it's really hard by just looking to the data or to the results whether it is an empty string or a blank space and this confuses a lot of developers or anyone working with data seeing those results it's really hard to detect the data quality issues by just looking at the results so now in this scenario what i do i go and calculate the length of each value inside my column so let's go and do that now we're gonna go in the SQL server, we're going to go and use the function data length and our field going to be the category. So let's call it category length. So let's go execute it. And now let's check the result. The first one says we have only one character. The length of that is going to be one, which is correct. And now to the next row, we have the category null. We don't know the value. And as well, we don't know the length of the value, right? So that's why we will get the null. So now by moving to the next one, as you can see, those two looking really exactly the same. But now with the help of the length or the data length function, we can see that the third row or the third category value has the length of zero. That means it is an empty string and we don't have any characters over here that is hidden. So with that, we are sure this is an empty string. But now let's move to the last one. Here it is very tricky and evil. We have a hidden space inside this value and we can understand that by the length of this field. So as you can see, we have here a one that that means we have here one hidden space inside this value and it is not empty string. So that means I have here only one space. Let's go and give it another space and calculate the length. So as you can see, we have two spaces and that's why the length is two. So don't count on your eyes in order to understand the spaces. Go and calculate the length in order to be very precise. So now let's go and compare the three scenarios side by side. So let's start with the first one about the representations in the table. The null, we're gonna see it as a null inside the table. The empty string gonna be like two quotes and nothing between them. And the blank space, it's as well two quotes and between them one or many spaces. And now if you are talking about the meaning, the null means unknown. We don't know the value. The empty string, it is known, but it is nothing. It is empty value. And the third one, blank spaces, it is as well known, and the spaces are the value. And now if you are talking about the data types, since the null is no value, so we don't have a data type for this, and it is like a special marker in the SQL. 
and now the empty string has a data type it is a string and the size of this string gonna be zero since we have zero characters inside the empty string moving on to the blank spaces it is a string since a space is a character and it's gonna be the size of one or many and now if we are talking about the storage the null is the best they don't consume or occupy a lot of storage while the empty string and the blank spaces they occupy here storage and memory and they waste the space so if you are worried about the storage the best option here is a null now talking about the performance you will get the best performance if you are using nulls now the empty string is as well fast but it is not that fast like the nulls now the worst option here is the blank spaces it is slow so again if the speed is important for you you have to have those scenarios as a null so now if you are talking about the comparison and you are searching for those values if you want to search for the null you have to go and use is null but in the other hand if you want to search for the empty string and the blank spaces you have to go and use the operator equal so that's all those are the main differences between the null empty string and blank spaces now you might ask you know what why do i have to understand the differences between all those stuff the nulls empty strings and the blanks everything like empty so why do i care well in new year project i'm gonna promise you that you will be working with sources and data that has bad data quality and you might encounter all those three scenarios in your data and now if you don't do any data preparations like cleaning up the data handling those three scenarios and bringing standards to your data and you jump immediately to the analyzers without doing all those stuff you will end up providing inaccurate results in your reports and analyzers which leads to wrong decisions so preparing your data before doing an analysis by cleaning up the data handling those three scenarios and as well bringing standards is very important step before doing any analysis so this is how we're gonna do it together with the stakeholders and the users of your reports and analyses you have to define a clear data policies it's like rules and you have to commit yourself during the implementations by following those rules and here we have three different options the first one you can go and define the data policies like this only use nulls and empty string but avoid using blank spaces in my project i cannot imagine that there is a scenario where we need blank spaces they are just evil just go and get rid of them all right so with this policy we have to go and get rid of all blank spaces inside our data and in order to do that we have a wonderful function in sql called trim the trim function in sql is gonna go and remove the spaces from a string from the left side and as well from the right side so all the leading spaces and the trailing spaces gonna be removed so now if we go and apply the trim function on that category what's gonna happen all the blank space is going to be removed and it's going to be turned into empty string so let's go and do that it's very simple so we're going to use the trim function and we're going to apply it on the category let's go and call it policy one so let's go and execute it so now by just comparing the policy one with the category you see like it's identical but it's not now in order to have a better feeling about this we can go and test it using the data length now let's go again and use the data length function so we're going to use it for the whole results and as well i'm going to go and use it for the category in order to just compare it so without the trim So like this let's go and execute it now if you go and check the result as you can see here again we have the length of two because here we have two spaces but with the policy one we have a zero so those two values after applying the trim function they have the length of zero and with that we don't have blank spaces so that means now we are sure after applying the trim we have either a null or empty string so let me just get rid of all those informations now i am sure both of them are empty string so as you can see it's very simple using only one sql function you are cleaning up the data and bringing standards all right moving on to the option two you can define your data policies like this only use nulls and avoid both empty strings and as well blank spaces so that means in our business we don't have anything meaningful for the empty string and the blank spaces we can go and use only the nulls okay so now let's go and implement this rule we have to go and convert a value to a null 
So the value is going to be empty string to a null. And as we learned, we can go and use the null if function in order to get nulls instead of values. So let's go and apply this policy. But now here we have two values, the empty string and spaces. Now, instead of having two rules for that, I'm going to convert first the blank spaces to an empty string like we have done here. So I'm going to take the result of this function first as a first step. And afterwards, we're going to go and use the null if. So we're going to say null if for the result of the trim, if you find any empty strings converted to null. So that's it. Policy two. So as you can see in the result, we have converted those empty spaces and planks to a null. So with that, we are getting three nulls. And of course, we're going to get the value A. And now if you compare those three columns side by side, you're going to see the policy two is really easier to understand compared to the previous one, right? So now if you compare the policy two now to the policy one, you can see it's easier to understand and it's easier as well to handle. So again, it's very easy to do data cleanup with only two functions we have now like standards inside our data. And now moving on to the last option, we can define our data policy like this. Use only a default value unknown and avoid using anything else like nulls, empty strings and blank spaces. So that means in the analyzers and reports, we want to see the value unknown and we have to handle all those three informations and convert them to unknown. So now in order to implement the policy three, we have to go and convert a null with a value, a default value. And here we have two options, either use the is null or we can go and use the coalesce. And I will go with the coalesce, so coalesce. And I'm going to use directly the category. So if you find any null, replace it with the default value unknown. And let's call it policy three. So let's go and execute it. So now if you check the result over here, you see that we got it only once correct. So we replaced the null with the unknown, but we still have like empty spaces and blanks. And that's because we rushed using the coalesce and we skipped the other steps. So as you can see, preparing the data, you have to do it slowly, step by step. So first we have to go and convert everything to a null like the policy two. And after that, the last step, we're going to go and use the default value. So that means instead of using the category, we have to go and get the result of the policy two. So let's go and copy it and replace the category with those two steps and let's go and execute it. So now, as you can see, we have the default value for all those three scenarios. First, we have to trim the data in order to remove all the blank spaces. The second step, we're going to go and replace all the empty strings with a null. And with that, we're going to get a null for all those three scenarios. And finally, we're going to go and replace the nulls with a default value, the unknown. So that's it for the three policies. And this is the different ways in order to clean up the data and bring standards before doing analyzes. And now you might ask me, okay, which one should I use in my project? Like if I want to suggest something for the users, which one should I use? Well, it really depends on the business, but I try always to avoid this one, the policy one, because it's always confusing and I have always to explain it for the users. So now we are left with the two and three. Will I use both of them in different scenarios? I normally go with the policy two because it takes less storage and as well the performance of your queries afterward is going to be really good. So if I'm doing data preparations in my ETL before inserting it inside a table, I go with the policy two. But in other hand, if I'm doing a preparation step before showing it in a report like in Tableau or Power BI. So if it is like one of the last steps before showing the data to the users, I go with the policy three. Because if you present a null inside a report, it's going to be really hard to read. So having like a word like unknown, it's easier to understand. Okay, we have here missing data. So again, if the data preparations is exactly before I present the data to the users, I go with the policy three where I use default values. But if I'm using a data preparations before inserting it in the database, I go with the policy two because it's going to optimize the storage and it's going to be really bad if you go with the policy three because it's really bad to store the whole world each time there is no value you like the unknown it's gonna take a lot of space and as well you're gonna get bad performance as you are building the queries that's why i tend to store the data using nulls if you present it to the users go and show it as a default value so as you can see it's very important to understand the differences between the nulls empty strings and blanks and how to prepare the data by cleaning up the data and bringing standards and policies before doing any analysis so with this we have cleared up the confusion between those scenarios and if you encounter it in your projects you know how to deal with it 
Alright, so now let's have a quick summary about the nulls. Nulls are special markers in SQL in order to say there is no value, it is missing, it is unknown. So nulls are not equal to zero or empty string or any blank spaces. And using nulls inside our database is gonna save some storage and as well provide strong performance in your queries. And in SQL we have different functions in order to handle the nulls. So now if you want to replace a null with the value, we can go either with the function Kawalis or is null. Or if you want to do the opposite where you want to replace a value with null, you can go use the function null if. Or in other cases we want only to check whether there is nulls or not, we can use the is null or is not null. And we have learned as well that we have to treat the nulls especially before doing any tasks. So that means we have to handle the nulls before doing, for example, data aggregations like average, sum, max, min, and so on. And we have to handle the nulls as well before doing any mathematical operations like using the plus operator to concatenate two strings. And in some scenarios, as we learned, we have to handle the nulls as well before doing joins. And in other cases, we have as well to handle the nulls before sorting the data. And we have learned as well, by combining the joins and the is null, we introduce new types of joins, like as we learned, the left anti-join and the right anti-join, where we exclude the matching rows using the is null. And we can use the null functions in order to provide standards and data policies in our data, like using the nulls or using a default values like the unknown. Alright friends, so with that we have now a clear understanding what are nulls and why it's important to handle them and how to handle them using different SQL null functions before doing any data analysis. And now moving on to the next chapter, we're going to learn how to work with date and time using many different SQL functions. If you like this video and you want me to create more content like this, I'm going to really appreciate it if you support the channel by subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all those stuff going to help the channel with the YouTube algorithm and as well my content going to reach the others. So. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.